Espresso martinis are one of the most popular and most highly requested cocktails out there in the cocktail world right now. The main key element of espresso martinis is espresso. Now, you don't need to be working behind a bar or a cafe to know that really good espresso machines are super expensive. And the fact of the matter is, there are tons of bars and restaurants that don't have these machines available in their establishments. And because the espresso martini is so wildly popular, bars and restaurants that don't have these espresso machines have to resort to other coffee-related ingredients in order to keep up with the demand. Now, are using these other coffee-related ingredients going to give you the same result as an espresso would in an espresso martini? For a short answer, no. But you could still make a really great cocktail that is coffee flavored that is similar to an espresso martini without using espresso. And honestly, most people ordering this cocktail kind of just want to have the vibe of having an espresso martini. There's only a few people that are like super fanatic about making sure that they have fresh espresso in their martinis, which isn't a bad thing. You know, you like what you like. Today, we'll be making five different versions of an espresso martini so that if you're a new bartender and you're going behind a bar that doesn't have an espresso machine, at least you have some other form of a good recipe to follow. Hey y'all, it's your girl, Fly Girl Nina, and welcome back to Fly Girl Bartending. <laughs> Firstly, we're gonna go over some overall tips. Freshly ground coffee beans are always going to taste better than pre-ground coffee beans because freshly ground coffee contains more oils and the oils create acidity, which causes more foam in the martini. Shaking the cocktail really hard can help encourage the ingredients to foam up more. Try not to shake too long. You wanna keep your shakes really short. Another technique that a lot of bartenders also utilize when making an espresso martini is they will dry shake the cocktail first and then add ice and do a regular shake. I don't know why for me that just doesn't work, but you know, if you get more luck out of it than I do, then feel free to do that as well. <laughs> because espresso, coffee, cold brew, etc., they're all made with water. So if you are shaking your espresso martini, you don't want to over dilute it because then the drink will just taste watered down. So there are a couple ways that you can combat this from happening. It's better to shake with either a large ice cube or a lot of small ice cubes because there will be less surface area and the cocktail will cool down a lot quicker. And there's another technique that I like to use sometimes where I just add three ice cubes and then shake it until all that ice has dissolved. That way it doesn't over dilute the cocktail, but it's still causing a lot of aeration to come into the cocktail. Using a rich simple syrup will be a little bit better than using a regular simple syrup because with it being more rich, that means that there's less water in that syrup mixture, which means less dilution in the cocktail. Obviously, if you don't have rich simple syrup available to you, then just use simple syrup. And along with the topic of dilution, a lot of bartenders also like to double strain their espresso martinis so that you don't get those like extra ice chips or excess dilution into your espresso martini. The type of coffee liqueur that you use in your espresso martinis in conjunction with how much simple syrup that you use will determine the sweetness level of your cocktail. So if you use the exact same recipe, one with Kahlua, which is a sweeter coffee liqueur, and another one with Mr. Black, which is a more bitter coffee liqueur, the Kahlua one will definitely taste sweeter in conjunction with that simple syrup. And lastly, don't be afraid to switch up the spirit in your espresso martini. Traditionally, espresso martinis are made with vodka, but you can make some really awesome ones with like bourbon, rum, or even tequila. Because vodka is supposed to be flavorless, adding in a different spirit with more characteristics will give more flavor to your cocktail. This is how to make a traditional espresso martini. We're gonna start with one ounce of vodka, one ounce of espresso, one ounce of coffee liqueur, and a half ounce of simple syrup. Now add some ice and shake it up hard and fast. Strain or double strain into your martini glass. And the traditional garnish for an espresso martini is three coffee beans. And there you have an espresso martini. <laughs> the next way we're gonna make an espresso martini is by using coffee. And we're gonna use the exact same measurements, one ounce of coffee, one ounce of vodka, one ounce of coffee liqueur, and a half ounce of simple syrup. Shake it up and strain or double strain into a martini glass and garnish with three coffee beans. Next up, we're gonna be using cold brew. 
We're gonna add one ounce of vodka, one ounce of cold brew, one ounce of coffee liqueur, and a half ounce of simple syrup. Add ice, shake it up, strain or double strain into a martini glass, and garnish with three coffee beans. Now we're gonna make an espresso martini using just coffee liqueur. Because for this one, we're literally just using coffee liqueur, we're gonna add a larger measurement of it to give it more of that coffee flavor. And going off of what I was saying before, is that the type of coffee liqueur that you use is going to directly affect how sweet your espresso martini is going to turn out. So a way that you can combat the sweetness of the coffee liqueur espresso martini is by adding a small amount of like a bitter amaro, or you can add a couple dashes of Angostura bitters, which will bring down the sweetness level. And one last thing about just using coffee liqueur in your espresso martini is because it is the least fresh coffee ingredient, um, it's not gonna really create a lot of that foam layer on top. The way you can create like the illusion of a foamy layer on top of your espresso martini is by using heavy cream and simple syrup. Honestly, I don't really have like real measurements for this. You kind of just have to eyeball and see how much heavy cream that you think would fit like on top of your espresso martini. And you should definitely add a little bit of simple syrup to one thin out the heavy cream as well as give it just a touch of sweetness because otherwise it'll literally just taste like heavy cream and not really have any flavor. All right, so for the base cocktail, we're gonna use one and a half ounces of coffee liqueur, one and a half ounces of vodka, a half ounce of simple syrup, and a quarter ounce of a bitter amaro. Shake up the cocktail, strain, double strain into the martini glass. And then like I said before, in a separate shaking tin, I will be adding in some heavy cream and a little bit of simple syrup, as well as two ice cubes and shaking that up until I can hear that the ice is almost fully dissolved because that will let me know that it's runny enough to flow on top. And then to give it a little extra oomph, I like to add like a spray of Angostura bitters on top, one for the aroma, but also for taste, and then three coffee beans. And for the fifth and final version of espresso martini, we're gonna be making a Bailey's espresso martini. So as you've seen throughout this entire video, Bailey's is actually not an original gradient in the espresso martini. However, there are a lot of people that do think it is, and some even think that that is what is responsible for creating that foamy layer of the espresso martini on top, which objectively, it kind of makes sense, you know? Coffee liqueur, then you have Irish cream. Like, the flavors could go well together for sure. But as far as I know, this consensus of Bailey's equals espresso martini is more so just like a genius marketing scheme from Bailey's. And taste-wise, it's still a great cocktail. It's just very different from like all the other martinis in this list. All right, so for this recipe, we're gonna be adding one ounce of vodka, one ounce of espresso, one ounce of Bailey's, and a half ounce of simple syrup. Shake it with some ice, strain or double strain into a martini glass and then garnish with three coffee beans. All right, you guys, I hope that this video answered any questions that you may have had from espresso martinis, or if it even helps make some suggestions on how to make your espresso martinis better. I'm not claiming to be an espresso martini professional. However, these are just some tips I have learned along the way that I want to share with you guys. Let me know in the comments what your preferred method of an espresso martini is, whether you're making it or you're drinking it. <laughs> And even if it's not on this list to include that, I would like to try out something different myself. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time on Flag Girl Bartending. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>